great crops that we can grow in the cool season is mustard. Now, when I was a little girl, my mother cooked mustard greens and I wasn't very fond of them, but I've tried them again since and I've decided that I really like the flavor. And there's so many beautiful mustard plants that they're really quite attractive in your garden. One that I really like is this purple variety. It gets very large. Now you can buy the four inch pot and actually start trimming leaves on it as soon as you plant it when it's this large, but it will grow into a very large leafy plant. I even use it sometimes mixed in flower containers. It looks pretty with a lot of the pansies. Now, the more common mustard is this curled mustard. That's the one that you find most often in the grocery store, and that one can be a little bit bitter. You can combine it with turnip greens or collard greens to help uh, soften the flavor a bit, but I find that I like it. Now, this is one of the oriental mustards. This one it's called Mabuna, and Mabuna has a very mild flavor. It's great for stir fries. You can even put it in salads when the leaves are small. Another oriental mustard is the Mizuna, and that one is also great for salads and stir fries when it's small, and uh, also can be cooked as a green as the leaves get larger, and it does get to be a very large plant. Now, this new mustard I really love is called Tender Green, and it's a combination of spinach and mustard. So it has the sweetness of spinach, but the little zip of mustard too grows very well here, and uh, just has an amazing flavor. Then the, the uh, lacy looking mustards are really beautiful to put into your flower beds. You can buy the green one or the red mustard and it becomes beautiful uh, plants. Now you can harvest the entire plant if you want and cook the greens, but I generally just take off some of the leaves down to the base of the plant and keep harvesting. And you do have to make sure that you continue to harvest regularly with mustard because like all of the brassicas, if it's not being harvested sufficiently, it's going to go in its bloom stage. And you can, can actually eat the flowers of mustard. You can wait till it produces seeds, save the seeds, and make your own mustard condiment or just use the mustard seed in your cooking, and that's wonderful. It's best to harvest the seed pods before they start to open because they will fly everywhere. So just take those brown seed pods, put them in a paper bag, and they'll dry. And it's nice to have those in the kitchen as well. But do, when the flower spikes appear on the plants, just make sure you trim those plants down and it'll get them back into the uh, producing leaves stage. There are a few insects that can be a problem. Sometimes aphids are an issue with mustard, also snail slugs and pill bugs. So you might want to use some of the uh, uh, bait type formulas like Sluggo or Sluggo Plus that are an iron phosphate uh, granule to help with insects and spray with seaweed and, and uh, soap to keep the aphids at bay. Even a strong blast of water on your mustard will help keep those uh, insects at bay. And uh, it's fairly cold tolerant too, but it, for the coldest nights when we're below 25, I would give mustard a cover. And um, it's it's just a wonderful plant to saute. Uh, I love to cook it with a little onion and garlic and saute it. And I'll have some recipes for using mustard on our Central Texas Gardener website. So be, to sure, be sure to check under Trisha's recipes and uh, look for M for mustard and I'll have some ideas for you using it. And uh, if you give mustard a try in your garden, you'll enjoy the attractiveness of the leaves and also the wonderful flavor.